This is New Cap News with Jacob Zare. Good evening and thank you for joining us, Jack. The Bobcats kind of coming home after a bit of a road trip and they're, they're doing pretty well, as you said. Yeah, mm. three in a row looking to make it four tonight against the Storm. We'll have a little preview of that coming up in yeah. sports. All right, well, we'll look forward to that. Gerard, what about our weekend? What are we looking forward to in that? Well, we're looking forward to a bumper weekend, all right? The temperatures wouldn't be all of that like what we've been having <laughs> last month, eh? But it's going to be really nice, especially with the turkey and all of that. 12 is where we're sitting to. That's where we got to since about 2 o'clock. The winds have been gusting today. They're still up there anywhere from 30 to 42 at the moment basically north northwest 59 percent is that humidity down from a 70 percent earlier on in the afternoon and as we compare across the region 14 in the cold lake areas so maybe some more cloud cover over there the battlefield's definitely cloudy for that 12. we'll talk about whether those wind gusts are going to stick around and definitely for sure we'll tell you about the sunshine on the weekend in the second segment lloyd minster rcmp are seeking the public's help in an unsolved crime on December 7, 2010, a man and a woman entered the Lloydminster Sport Check. The pair made purchases with a stolen credit card. The suspects are shown in the image on your screen here. Anyone with information regarding this or any other crime is asked to please contact the Lloydminster RCMP or Crime Stoppers. People who have diabetes and are wanting to learn more about the disease are more informed after the fourth annual Lloydminster Lions Club Diabetes Presentation last night. Held at the First Baptist Church, the keynote speaker educated listeners about the seriousness of the disease and how to manage a normal lifestyle. Kathy Lee has that story. Getting type 1 diabetes. Steering away from a lecture type presentation, Lori Berard's goal is to have an open conversation about diabetes. People with diabetes live with it 99.8% of the time without a healthcare professional helping them. So for 0.2% of the time, if I tell them what to do, I'm not helping them to understand what they can do on their own. Breaking it down, Berard says type 1 diabetes inhibits the body's ability to produce insulin and affects 5% of people in Canada, whereas type 2 diabetes is more genetic and lifestyle dependent. It's the rising number of cases in the latter type that's a cause for concern. Nine million Canadians are affected by either diabetes or pre-diabetes and that's expen exponentially uh, larger numbers than we ever anticipated in the year 2011. Berard emphasizes the importance of taking the disease seriously because it's the secondary complications that causes life-threatening problems. 80% of people with diabetes will die of a vascular event, meaning a heart attack or a stroke related to having diabetes. Half of, the, uh, half of the admissions to a dialysis unit in this country are because of diabetes. Those who are at risk for the disease fall into this group. Women who develop diabetes during their pregnancy, genetics, poor lifestyle choices, and those of certain ethnicity. However, there's an easy way to detect it. Get screened. The age for screening is 40. If you've got a strong family history, ask at age 30. Screening is a simple fasting blood sugar, uh, you know, just one blood test. And if a person is diagnosed with the disease, Berard's take-home message is changing one's lifestyle, such as exercising and eating healthy, can help bring diabetes under control. We know that when people are aggressive with lifestyle intervention that they can prevent diabetes from occurring six out of ten times. That's a pretty staggering statistic. Kathy Lee, New Cap News. The Lloydminster Health Foundation gave away over $40,000 in scholarships today. The money will help enhance the education of local health care professionals and also kickstart some students' educations in the field. Whitney Simpson reports. Kaylee is receiving the Pat Redden Memorial Scholarship. She's enrolled at the University of Calgary, working towards a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. She says this extra $5,000 will be put to good use. I'm going to use it to pay for my CRNE exam and pay for registration and hopefully get an apartment. <laughs> the Redden family created the scholarship after Pat passed away in 2006. Kaylee is the fifth recipient. The Reddens say it always makes them happy to see the award given away. Just the pleasure of seeing someone like Kaylee today enjoying you know, the gifts of, uh, of your toils that you've had to do for the last few years, and it all costs money. Kaylee has always wanted to be a nurse, and this is just one of the scholarships the Health Foundation provides to make that dream a reality. I just love helping people, and my mom was a nurse. She is a nurse in Vermilion, and she's a huge inspiration. In total, there are six scholarship funds, and some of them give to more than one recipient. New this year is the TD Grants in Medical Excellence. It provides money for educational or development courses for healthcare professionals working in Lloydminster. This year, it will benefit 60 nurses. 
the caregivers and the professional nurses, whichever category they're in, are improving their skills and their learning, and that all helps come back to Lloyd Minster and help all of us as uh, residents of the community. The generous donors are happy to see investment in our health care system and hope it pays off. It helps people along their way, and hopefully they come back to the community and help. There is a definite possibility of coming home. Um, going away from home, you learn that you're a big homebody, and I would just love to be close to my family and in this great community. Whitney Stinson, Newcap News. With the constant advancement of technology, it can be argued that innovation is becoming more and more important every day. The Cold Lake High School is recognizing its importance and the opportunity students have at school to become more innovative and resourceful. As Clayton Brown reports, the school held a two-day innovation challenge for over 100 students. Osom and the Cold Lake High School have teamed together to challenge students in the field of innovation. It's a pilot project that's nearing an end, but still gaining steam. We want to work with the high school students to uh, teach them the skill set of innovation at an early age. That's a skill that they'll take with them for the rest of their lives, and they can apply that to some of the small challenges and big challenges that the world is facing today. There's going to be some kids in here that this process maybe brought them out a little bit and say, hey, now, hey, I can do something like this. I want to do something like this. The students' task? To design and build a ride for a theme park, a fun project that turned out to be more work than anticipated. Designing something takes a lot of time. There's a lot of steps involved. You gotta review what you want to do, then interview to find out how other people have done it, then analyze how you're going to do it. We ran out of supplies, and then we ran out of tape, and then like all the stuff we had, it kind of like didn't work out. So we had to redo our well, not redo our whole idea, but redo a lot of it. Along with the challenge of designing and creating a prototype of a theme park, the students also got to hear from some experts in innovation. People from the, from the states, from IDO, which is a great innovation company, and having those guys work with kids, I think it's a great opportunity, probably once in a lifetime opportunity for some of these kids. They come up with ideas and they do things sort of faster and better, brilliantly and uh, more innovatively than you would have expected. In Cold Lake, Clayton Brown, Newcap News. There's a pig roast in Mar Wayne this weekend, and a Lloydminster sports organization is planning a comedy night. Heather Clagus has all the details on this week's What's Happening. Tomorrow is going to be a very special day in Mar Wayne. It's harvest day. Starting at noon, just head for the fire hall. They're going to have a pig roast set up, also a barbecue. Plus, they've got live music throughout the day, including the Nelson Youth Group. They'll be performing there. Plus, they've got a lot of stuff going on for the entire family, a coloring contest for the kids, and they're doing a lot of fundraising for the new hall that they're building out in Mar Wayne. So a fantastic day in store for you tomorrow if you head to the community of Mar Wayne. Now is the time for you to start making plans for next weekend and get your tickets for a night of comedy. The Lloydminster Figure Skating Club is hosting a comedy night next Saturday night. That's October the 15th. And one of the comedians they've got coming in, he's been in the movies Happy Gilmore. He's also in the new movie 5050. If you want more details, if you want to get tickets, you can go online to lloydminsterskating.com. And there's always new music to be harvested, and this time we've got a chance for you to win a copy of Jan Arden's new album, Spotlight. It's got some new music, plus some live versions of some of her biggest hits. If you want a copy, really easy. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. And we want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for hooking us up with the music. And if you feel like dancing tomorrow night, just head on out to the Moose Lodge. They're hosting a dance featuring the country callers. Things get underway at 8 o'clock. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegas, and that's what's happening. What's Happening is sponsored by Winmar Restoration. When flood, fire, or natural disaster strikes, the company you want to call is Winmar Restoration, coming through for you. We've been hearing mostly doom and gloom about the economy lately, but after the break, we'll hear the latest surprising job numbers. Stocks and oil prices brought to you by Spectrum Restoration. When disaster strikes, don't wait. Call the professionals at Spectrum Restoration, a certified member of the Canadian Disaster Restoration Group. 
Time now to announce our final winners of Lloyd FM's Find the Farmer, Find the Fuel promotion. Every morning, Kurt and Heather are playing a 10-second clip, and then in the afternoon, Travis Kay gave the first caller through at the correct location, a $100 fuel card from Co-op Agro Centers. You could also enter at the Agro Centers in Lloydminster, Lashburn, and Neilburg. This week's winners from Lloydminster are Donna Beggs and Les Sparks. From Lashburn, we have Danny Churn and Gary Minish. And from Neilburg, Cyril and Shelley Spence and Fred and Brenda Whiteman. And finally, today's on-air winners are Marina Dimmel and Jim Wack, both from Lloydminster. They all now qualify for the grand prize of a $10,000 Agro Center gift card. Now, these are our last qualifiers of four of these. All 44 of the qualifiers are going to be given to the staff at the Lloydminster District Co-op to review and then make the draw next Wednesday. Next Wednesday afternoon, we'll head out to find the farmer and present him with his grand prize of that $10,000 gift card. The Nobel Peace Prize winner was announced today, and after the break, we'll meet the three women who will be sharing the prize this year. Ang and commodity prices are brought to you by City Center Auto Body. They can fix anything at City Center Auto Body, Lloydminster.